Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts. And today I'm here with Brownell's Daily Defense to talk to you about rifle ballistics out of an M4 AR-15 platform of internal, external, and terminal performance of the projectile. So the first thing we wanna talk about, as the bullet leaves the barrel, gravity is immediately affecting it. So it's always pulling it down to the ground. And we adjust through various means and methods to get the bullet to hit the target at whatever distance we're shooting at. So one of the things that I like to start off with is an understanding of external ballistics. So once the bullet leaves the barrel, it immediately travels. Now, if we did nothing to alter the aim point, the bullet would go out and eventually gravity would take over and pull it straight down to the ground. However, because we like to use these rifle systems at extended ranges, we have to, in a sense, create a little bit of lift to lob the bullet to the target. And that's where external ballistics really comes in. So if I actually elevate the muzzle slightly, what that will do is that will allow me to extend that range. Now, it doesn't really do anything to stop gravity, but what it does is it helps us to overcome gravity to hit the target at a specific distance. And so what I will tell people is while it doesn't really look like a rainbow, it is for, more, for most practical purposes an arc. So some of the environmental factors that can also affect the bullet in flight is things like temperature, altitude, humidity, all of this has an effect because what the environmental factors do is it changes the structure of the molecules of the air. And so as the bullet is slicing through the air, it's hitting those molecules. And now if the molecules are thicker or spread out or more dense, that will affect the bullet. As the molecules are hitting the bullet, it's causing a little bit of friction, a little tiny bit of friction, which is slowing the bullet down. So these are things that you might want to start to read a little bit more about so you can understand how to truly hit targets at extended ranges. Now, some of the ballistic terms that we talk about here is uh, the first one has to do with the rifle itself. And you'll notice how the optic sits above the bore. So the bore is the center of the barrel and you'll notice how that's about mm, two and a half inches. So right away my bullet will strike below my point of aim. And so what I have to do is at certain distances I have to be aware of that. So if I'm shooting at closer ranges, say 15 yards and in, I need to know that if I'm aiming at an X ring that my bullet is probably going to hit low. And so as I shoot this more and more I start to become more aware of that. What will happen is at a certain point, that bullet will cross my sight line. As it crosses my sight line, it's now, you know, basically for all practical purposes, zeroed. And once it does, it's going to continue to climb. So that first intersection between the bullet's flight path and my sight line is called the initial intersection. As it continues to climb, it's going to reach the highest point that it can go, and that's the maximum ordinate. That height is sometimes important because, generally speaking, I want to keep it relatively small. Once it starts to turn back down to earth, it's going to eventually pass my sight line a second time in what we like to call terminal intersection. And that's going to be the farthest zero range that you'll have. Then after that, it's just going to continue to fall until it eventually hits the earth. So understanding those simple terms, the height over bore, the um, first intersection, the maximum ordinate, and then the last intersection or terminal intersection are gonna help you to understand how these ballistics all come into play. Now, once the bullet strikes the target, that's what we call terminal ballistics. And this has to do with how the bullet reacts inside of soft tissue. So if you're interested in learning how these bullets work in a self-defense setting, well, again, there's some things that we wanna pay attention to. Uh, what type of round am I using? If I'm using the most common round, which is a 55 grain ball round, full metal jacket round, what will happen is as it enters into that soft tissue, it's going to immediately start to slow and the hydrostatic kind of conditions there are going to create all sorts of weird stuff. And what might happen at certain velocities is that the bullet actually will fragment. And as the bullet fragments, it goes off into, you know, different wounding tracks, which is going to help increase the lethality of that wound. So that's one of the unique features of a rifle caliber is that it's shooting at such a higher velocity that that velocity actually helps to increase a, the, the wounding mechanisms of those rounds. So sometimes having a better, a better understanding of that will help you in selecting what type of rounds that you want to use. But one of the things that's key to any of these selections is going to be the velocity. 
And a lot of times we get focused on the muzzle's velocity. How fast is the bullet coming out of the muzzle? And that's an important distinction and something that you really want to know. But as the round travels through the air, it's losing that velocity. And so we want to kind of be mindful of what velocity is is present at certain distances because the higher the velocity at the target, the more performance I can expect from that round as far as a wounding mechanism is concerned. So ideally, I wanna hit that target with as much velocity as I possibly can because that's just gonna make the bullet perform that much better. All right, so this is just a down and dirty to kind of help introduce you to some of the terms and understandings and philosophies behind rifle ballistics. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Until then, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. Take care and stay safe.